Hello, assalamu alaikum and good evening. Welcome to another episode of Health is Wealth. I am your host, Shabnam Riaz. Okay, today we have a very, very interesting program lined up for you. It's, you know, it's about eye diseases. And um, so we just take our eyes for granted, don't we? So many times we're just overusing them and then we end up going to see a doctor uh, with problems that maybe we could have prevented if we'd known something about it or we'd been more careful. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about all the diseases that there are about the eye. Well, many of them, as many as that we can fit into this program. And for that, we're very happy to have with us in the studios our expert, Dr. Amir Esrar, who is a consultant ophthalmologist of Manat Eye Hospitals and also president-elect Cataract and um, Refractive Surgery Society of Pakistan. Thank you very much, Dr. Amir, for joining us here today. Assalamu alaikum and thank you so much for having me over again for a second program. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Okay, so, you know, many people get confused when we're talking about the eyes, you know, it's not, not really that much knowledge as you would think that, you know, people know when you're talking about the heart or you're talking about the kidneys or other things. The eyes seem to be something that send people in a lot of uh, confusion. And so we're going, to, we're going to, you know, try and cover lots of things today. Um, let's start with, you know, contact lenses, because you see many people using contact lenses. Um, what are the myths and the facts, and how could they actually end up causing you harm? Well, contact lenses certainly are, uh, first thing is like, they're, they're quite helpful. Mm -hmm. They're one of the alternatives of glasses. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say like uh, they're an absolute alternative, but uh, we can certainly mix and match with glasses and uh, use them. Mm -hmm. The use should be justified. Mm -hmm. They should not be overused. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is like whenever we are thinking of getting a contact lens, it has to be from a proper place. Mm -hmm. Contact lenses do come up with certain uh, attachments like uh, there's got to be a proper fluid. The casing has got to be proper. Mm -hmm. It's got to be like from a good a company rather than just getting it from off the shelf type thing okay. and the person who's fitting contact lenses should take proper measurements of contact lenses mm -hmm. they have to measure the diameter that they're prescribing the base curvature the shape of the uh, eye should match the contact lens mm -hmm. it should not be too much tighter fit or too much looser fit because mm -hmm. otherwise they can damage the eye there are certain things that we look into before prescribing contact lenses mm. one certainly is the age of the person mm. And normally my criteria for prescribing contact lens is when the person is good enough to manage their own hygiene properly. Okay. Because that is the only way they can manage the hygiene of a contact lens. Okay. Because every time we use the contact lens, they have to be washed properly. Mm -hmm. And when we store them, they have to be washed properly again. Mm -hmm. Common troubles that we see with contact lenses are allergies, infections, red eye, mm -hmm. irritable eyes, watery eyes, and these normally come up if the fitting is not good mm -hmm. or if you're not keeping hygiene improper. Okay, so you know, uh, you've, you, you've mentioned so many technical things mm -hmm. here. I don't think many people are really aware that there's so many things that are important here. What about those cosmetic lenses that you get over the counter? You see many, mm -hmm. you know, young girls and uh, people g buying those. That's true, and I think they're like far more, the more self-prescribed type of I think that we, we can see. Yeah. Uh, until unless they're really aware of how to use them mm. and for how long they can use it, mm -hmm. it's, it's like good enough. But if they are not aware, mm. that might not fire in good for the eyes. We sometimes like if uh, people come to us with severe eye infection mm -hmm. and what we've noticed is that instead of using the proper fluid, they've used the saliva oh. and just put uh, to wet the contact lens and put them in the eye. Then that leads to a very, very bad sort of an infection. Mm -hmm. The worst sort of infection that we can get with a contact lens is the uh, fungal infection, mm -hmm. which can really have a very bad effect onto the cornea. Mm -hmm. Now, the other, the first thing that the, uh, this infection is going to cause is to lead to a trouble into the cornea. Mm -hmm. And if it goes deeper, it will lead to scarring mm -hmm. and lead to per, almost like a permanent damage of, of the vision. Okay. So for the people who are not you know, familiar with the terms, what the cornea, what, what, what is that? Yeah, cornea is the front clear part of the eye. Okay. And that is the most important part that would lead to the focusing of an image onto our back part of the eye called the retina. Right, okay. So um, as you said that, you know, if you're using cosmetic lenses, then you have to have a proper uh, sort of a, a, a routine with them. What, how long can you keep them in for and when should you mm. be throwing them away and getting new ones? First thing is like, uh, 
using a cosmetic contact lens or a normal contact lens. Mm. There is no difference. Mm -hmm. The safety precaution stays the same. Okay. We cannot take uh, cosmetic contact lens lightly because mm. they're still touching the eye mm. and they are a foreign body in front of the eye. Mm. Uh, secondly, the most important thing is like if the eye goes red, mm. contact lenses need to be removed immediately. Immediately, okay. There is no contact lens in the world that we can sleep over with. Right. Normally we think that having contact mm. lens, we can like just keep them in for a week's time. Mm -hmm. There are no such contact lenses. Mm. The best type of contact lenses are single-use contact lenses okay. that we can use and throw it away. The and disposable every, ones. The disposable okay. one. Right. They come in as daily wear or like a different type of them. Uh -huh. And we can use it and throw them away. Mm -hmm. This leads to lesser type, lesser sorts of uh, uh -huh. chance to get an infection mm -hmm. or an allergy mm -hmm. or eye troubles. Mm -hmm. What are the worst case scenarios you've seen with contact lenses? Oh, that's really bad. Like the whole losing your whole vision. Really? Yeah. Mm. And what were the symptoms? Patient, actually, the last patient I saw uh, with such a trouble came in uh, when she had red eyes and there was some uh, uh, event she had to attend mm -hmm. and she just uh, had them put in the eye without any proper lubricant or washing them. Uh, developed a red eye, but since the event was going on and she kept on using it, uh -huh. and finally she developed a very bad infection uh -huh. and uh, she, it just ended up in, in a very bad prognosis. Oh, that's terrible. Mm. So, you know, that, that is so important to take mm. care. I mean, your body is telling you things and, you know, in the mm. ways of sort of pain, or as, you know, Dr. Amar has said, if your eyes are starting going red and you're using your lenses, you have to stop straight away and see a doctor. That is true, yeah. 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 Okay, true. so take yeah. these things, you know, beauty is, uh, you know, uh, it's okay, but you don't want to cause um, uh, permanent damage to yourself. Okay, now let's talk about cataracts, many myths yeah. and facts about cataracts. What are they? And will everyone end up getting a cataract? Uh, it's not like that everyone gets a cataract and it's not like that whoever gets a cataract will end up having a surgery done. Okay. So they're like two different things. Mm. First, usually people ask us about like what cataract is, mm. and it's the cloudiness of the lens present inside our eye. Mm -hmm. As we start getting graying of hair, mm. we do see changes in color of the lens with age, mm. and that's the most common cause. Mm. And it is not necessary that the whole lens is going to get cataractus, and then we're going to get uh, a surgery done. We see people who are actually having a cataract, and that it's there and stays there mm. for a longer time period mm. and does not change so we do not need to do surgery. As per my own rules I do not do cataract surgery till the time 20% of the vision is affected. Right okay. Mm. Um, are there any diseases that uh, can cause a, a cataract or is it just something that is going to happen with age? Can anything, mm. can you be on a high risk factor? For any? Yes, uh, age is one of the most common one okay. but uh, having said that we are seeing cataract in middle age group, in younger ki uh, kids and in babies as well. Mm. Different diseases that can lead to cataract mm. are like inflammation in the eye called uveitis. Mm. It could be trauma to the eye. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more common thing is like, uh, if you're taking medicines like uh, steroids and mm. other, mm. that can lead to cataract. Mm -hmm. These like diabetes do in, tend to have more of a possibility of developing an early cataract as well. Right, okay. Um, we're going to take some questions from you know some of our viewers. And um, Hamad Juma said that you know he's a patient of macular degeneration and has been using contacts for a, quite a long time. Yeah. And um, there was an incident where a contact scarred his left eye. And now doctors are recommending him not to use contacts because of the dust issue. He lives in Lahore. Uh, so maybe two separate things here. How, Absolutely. What, yeah. uh, macular degeneration is in the back part of the eye, mm -hmm. uh, which we call the retina or the, uh, the, the, the uh, film where image actually focuses on to. Mm. Uh, that thing could be because of his uh, having myopia of a higher degree. Okay. Or because of other reasons as well. So we cannot mix contact lens use with macular degeneration. The two separate They're issues. Absolutely two okay. different okay. situations going on. Mm. Now, once he's developed a scar in the cornea mm. after usage of contact lenses, mm. I think his doctors are absolutely right about it that they're not uh, allowing him to use contact lenses because it would even get f worse further, mm. or he may develop this thing in the other eye. Okay. So it's better to use glasses for his, in his case. Right. Can laser rectify anything here? Uh, laser certainly is one of the things that can be thought about. Mm. Uh, 
but it would totally depend that how deep the scar is mm -hmm. and how thick the scar is. Mm -hmm. There are a few tests that we can do beforehand and see whether it would be like easy to do laser and he would be completely getting rid of that scar. Right, okay. And also the macular degeneration. What, what is that? There are like, uh, macula is basically the center of the retina. This is the most important part of the retina and the eye. Mm -hmm. If we consider like any image that we see is going to be falling onto this part of the eye. Mm. And if there is a scar or a damage to this area, we won't be able to see clearly. Uh -huh. Now, uh, there are like specific cells in this area mm -hmm. which allow us to read, write, to see small things, to identify objects, mm -hmm. to see colors and all these things. Mm -hmm. So this is the area which is like considered to be like the m having 90% of our whole vision. Okay. Once there is a degeneration in it, mm. unfortunately, there is no way we can recover the lost vision. Okay. This is, these are the cells which were gifted to us mm. once and they'll never come back. Okay. The only thing we can do is either to slow the process down mm -hmm. or to convert the wet degeneration into a dry degeneration. But th these are like more technical terms mm -hmm. which we're talking about. Okay, mm. right. So that would, you know, to see a, a, a proper doctor would be able to, you know... Diagnose to about diagnose it and right, uh, to be rightly managed. Right, mm. okay. Uh, Dr. Tehmina Rahman is asking that is there anything new for, is in terms of laser for the um, short-sightedness? Yeah. There's uh, a word for that, I think. Press, bi uh, press biopia. Press biopia. Uh, press biopia is when we start losing our near vision sight. Mm -hmm. And this normally appears around about the age of 40 years. Okay. This is one of the most burning issues all over the world because uh, this is one of the refractive surgery issue that almost like major population mm. who's interested in getting rid of glasses mm. is interested in. Okay. Uh, the only best treatment that I know of is called Press Beyond that we've been doing for quite some time, but it has got its limitation. Okay. And this one, what we do is we make both the eyes good for intermediate vision, mm -hmm. but the dominant eye looks at distance and the non-dominant eye looks at the near thing. Right. So we've got one eye looking for distance and the other eye taking care of the near vision, but both eyes are good for the intermediate. Now, generally, if we talk about like 90% of our time viewing things mm. is for the intermediate vision mm. and 10% is divided between the distance and the near. Mm. So, but on the other hand, once we've got this laser done, mm. we might need a top up every five years. Mm. So that would be our top up of uh, like, what I mean by top up is like doing laser mm. just to compensate for the uh, coming of uh, press biopia with age. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, if a patient who gets gestational diabetes, uh, will that, how will that affect her um, eyesight throughout life? Yeah, diabetes is like one of those diseases that uh, in our population, what we've seen in our culture, people don't really take much care about. Hmm. And eyes and kidneys are the first things those are affected. And hmm. uh, once they get affected, it's very difficult to get controlled off. Hmm. So the better thing is like to, as we always have heard about and said, like precautions far better than uh, anything else. So we got to take really good care of uh, diabetes hmm. before it starts causing trouble. Right. If someone has developed diabetes, hmm. they won't develop eye trouble for at least 10 years time. Oh, that okay. would be round about the time. It's not like uh, absolutely like the 10th okay. year and uh, they'll start mm. seeing eye troubles. Right. But if they've been taking good care of it, the trouble mm. will be there, but they won't be that strong. What, what, is the, what is the trouble that you get? Is it with the vision? Yes, it could be with the vision, but otherwise they could be like in the retina, like leakage mm. of blood vessel, the um, hemorrhages, mm. exudates, which are cholesterol deposits onto the retina, plus mm. having uh, cataract development. Mm. And uh, the, with the retinal involvement, they'll have certainly irreversible loss of vision. So that's why it's very important to be taking your, diet, your medicines and keeping your blood sugar in control. Absolutely. Right. So that's another, you know, important tip that Dr. Amr is giving. That, you know, don't take things lightly if you are diagnosed with have, you're, you're being diabetic. It's very important to keep your blood sugar under control. Um, now, uh, glaucoma. What exactly is that? Glaucoma is basically more like blood pressure in the body. Uh -huh. And glaucoma is of two different types. Mm -hmm. It can be a high pressure or a normal tension glaucoma. Mm -hmm. In both the cases, our optic nerve, that is the nerve that takes signal from the eye to the brain, mm -hmm. starts getting damaged. Mm -hmm. The damage is because of the lack of blood flow. Uh -huh. Now, in a high tension glaucoma, in which the pressure is high, we can actually monitor the pressures and reduce the pressure 
and improve the blood flow of the optic nerve. Mm -hmm. But the more troublesome are the low tension glaucoma or the normal tension glaucoma in which the pressures are not high, uh -huh. but still the nerve fibers are getting damaged. Uh -huh. It's exactly like if we've got a five kilograms of weight lying, mm. someone might pick it up and have no trouble. Mm. But there's another person who's got a back trouble, mm. picks it up and is not able to walk after that. So it's like an individual thing. Mm -hmm. I might be good with a pressure of 18 or 20, mm. but on the other hand, another person might not be good with a pressure of 14 or less than that. Okay. In both the cases, we have to use drops. Mm. Has, this thing has to be managed absolutely mm. meticulously. Mm. Otherwise, the damage is irreversible in this case as okay. well. Okay. What are the symptoms? Normally, people come to us with headache or losing sight on the sides because it's the peripheral vision that goes off first and the central vision stays as it is. Right. I would say more than 80% of the patients are diagnosed in a routine checkup. In a routine checkup. Okay. How important is it to have a routine checkup and how after, you know, what duration? Once a year or twice a year? After 40, once a year is recommended. And uh, like apart from glaucoma, mm. I think it's good to have an eye checkup, especially in cases of children less than 10 years. Right, okay. Um, so what about family histories then? It's glaucoma. absolutely important because mm. there is like a lot of uh, inheritance factor with glaucoma. Mm. Okay. Mm. Let's talk about children now. Uh, children, what, um, what are the main things that parents should be looking out for? When should they be taking their child to have uh, an eyesight test? One important thing is like all, every child needs mm. an eye test. And mm. that is the reason school health services were introduced. Mm. Because if a child can see from one eye, mm. they would never complain. Right. And whenever we see a child who has got like vision in one eye and the other eye is amblyopic, that is a lazy eye, mm. and they're not able to see, and they ask like, why did they not tell the parents or mm. the brothers or sisters? Mm. They would always say like, we always thought like we, everybody looks through one eye and the other eye is just like uh, for nothing. Okay. So, uh, and the, the, sometimes they're scared about it because they've, they, they're scared like uh, everybody's going to make fun of them, mm. that they're not able to see clearly. Mm. There are like times when they have told their parents and they mm. don't take them seriously mm. and they think like uh, they're just doing, throwing in tantrums because they don't want to study or anything. Mm. Mm. As a general thing, uh, when like at the age of four years, mm. they must have an eye checkup. Four years. And even okay. before that, if mm -hmm. anything is noted, okay. they need to have an eye checkup. Few things which are like important. Mm. If the child is not taking interest in studies, mm. like reading and writing, mm. not watching television, uh -huh. not interested in that, mm -hmm. not interested in outdoor sports, mm -hmm. it could be because they could not, they're not seeing things clearly. Okay. So they do not have much of an interest in those things. Right. In cases of cross eye, they need to have mm. uh, an eye checkup. If, the eyes, uh, if they are having watery or red eyes, mm. they need to be seen by an eye doctor. Right. The cross-eyed or, or the squint, what are the treatments available for that? For a cross-eyed uh, or a squint, we uh, can divide them in three different sections. Mm. One is that may need glasses, and with the help of glasses, they might get corrected straight away. The second one is when there is a deficiency in the muscle, and that needs to be corrected surgically. Mm -hmm. And the third type is when there's a mixed form in which they need glasses and mm. correction as well. Mm -hmm. But if this is there, mm. it has to be corrected as soon as it's diagnosed. Mm. I mean, there is no point in sitting on it. Right, okay. So um, parents find out that the child you know, needs glasses at a young age. Uh, how long will it be before they reach an age if they want to, say, have laser? Not before the age of 18, but uh, uh -huh. at the age of 18, we have to see how the stability of refraction is going on. Mm -hmm. If they are stable for six months to a year, mm -hmm. then it's good to have laser surgery done. Mm -hmm. But in case they're having a change every two, three months, mm -hmm. they need to be observed properly. Mm -hmm. And once they're stabilized, then only we should be going in for laser surgery. Right. And let's talk about laser surgery for people who want to correct their eyesight. Is it something that uh, anyone can be a suitable candidate for? We have to look into like how safe the laser is going to be for the person who's interested in. Mm. And then we can see like how much number can be treated. Mm. They're like different types of laser surgeries mm. and um, I may be a suitable candidate for one and mm. may not be for the other one. Okay. Or I may be a suitable candidate for all of them. Mm. So we have to find out what type of laser surgery is like going to fit in for the mm. person interested in having a laser surgery. Okay, and is that the same as refractive surgery? That's the same as refractive same surgery. Okay, yeah. right. Um, what is SMILE? 
Yeah, that's an uh, interesting thing. Actually, that's like the considered to be like the top of the world type of refractive surgery. And uh, we're glad that we have it in Pakistan in our center. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is like a very, very fascinating technology mm -hmm. in which we do not make a flap. Normally, we have to uh, either scrape off the surface of the cornea, mm -hmm. that's the front part of the eye, mm. or we have to lift up a flap of the cornea and do laser. Okay. In this, we actually create a very tiny hole, mm -hmm. approximately 2 to 2.5 millimeters, mm -hmm. and take a lenticule out of the cornea. Mm. and the vision is revived within 24 hours to almost 80 to 90 percent. Right, okay, so that has a higher success rate and, a, and a, a, a less of a recovery time as well then? It has, like the actual advantage is that there is no trauma to the eye or mm. like a very minimal trauma mm. to the eye. Mm. The damage or like the problems that we can have with the flap mm. are not there. Mm. The best thing is like the strength of the cornea is not compromised. Mm -hmm. And there is a thing called higher order abrasions, which are like the quality, which depends on quality of vision. Mm. So the quality of vision with smile is far better than with a uh, standard LASIK. Right, okay. So, um, you know, when we talk about uh, nearsightedness and farsightedness as well, what are the things that we should be doing? What um, sort of, um, you know, lifestyles should we be having? Is it true when our parents used to say to us that if you sit too near to the television, you're going to get glasses? Are things like that true? I think that's more like a myth, actually. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter whether we're sitting close to the television or uh, sitting at distance. Or watching too much television. Yeah, it's, it's like hardly, it makes any, har uh, any difference at all. Okay. The important thing is like, the room's got to be well lighted up. If it's okay. dark, it can induce a night myopia type of a situation. Mm -hmm. We can use uh, computers and other things to mm. the normal, mm. uh, like abuse of everything is banned. Mm. Certainly, mobile phones are like one thing that we've seen mm. uh, with, the, with the introduction of these mobile phones. We've seen like in our teenage group and in a younger group than teenage, they, they, the, the incidence of glasses are rising up. Mm. There's no absolute study about it, uh -huh. but there are like certain indicators which are telling us like mm. uh, using uh, excessive use of mobile phones, not a good idea. Right, because you know, uh, just looking, sometimes you can even feel the strain yourself when you've mm. spent too much time looking at your your phone and, and sort of the light that's coming out from there. So that is true. How, how, how much would be a uh, sort of a wise, uh, you know, amount of time spent mm. looking into a mobile screen, would you say? Actually, uh, it cannot be like a, into a fixed time thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it can vary from one person to another one. Mm -hmm. There are people who just get tired after like five minutes time use of a mobile phone or a computer. Mm. So once the eye get tired, it is important to give a break. Right. Uh, there are people who keep on using it till their eyes are watering and going red. That's not a good idea. <laughs> not at all. Uh, the important thing that uh, we have to do for is like, if you're using a computer, we have to give a break of mm. at least five minutes after mm. 20, 20 minutes use, if we are using it like for a longer time. Mm. Okay. What are the do's and don'ts uh, that you would advise to people, you know, to, for general care of their eyes? One thing is like not to watch television or use a computer in dark. In Always have good light around. Okay. Uh, mobile phones are so not. So what about uh, cinemas? That's like once in a week or once in a okay, month type so thing, okay. like maybe once in a life for some right. people. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, that's like something that's just done for like a yeah, very short time. A, right. Watching television using computer is a daily job, type. Mm, mm. so it's it's not like recommended mm. doing it all the time. Mm. People normally do it like uh, in a room, just having pitch dark mm, and using mm. a computer. That's mm. like something that can have a bad effect okay. on television. The other thing, um, what we've noticed, like people start, people have started using mobile phone as a substitute for a computer. Yeah. And that is not a good idea. Mm. Because it, the, the screen is small, the print mm. is small, light mm. is not good. And phones were never built for like for this. this purpose. And sometimes mm. you'll see people who are, you know, doing so, typing so much on, on the on, smaller screen. Yeah. Uh, that's putting too much of a load onto the eye unnecessarily. Mm, mm. Like it's it's not like a thing that we're going to use it for two hours today and we're going to get glasses the mm. very next day. It's not like that. Mm. But we're building onto it. Okay. And once we do that, then troubles can be there. Right. The changing weather. How does that affect our eyes and also diet as well? Yeah. Uh, Diet does not have much of a significant effect, except vegetables are certainly good for our eyes, mm. and especially for the retina. Mm. 
And what about the carrots? Sort of, you know, you yes, carrots that's like something I, absolutely a myth about. Like there, there <laughs> okay. was a vitamin A deficiency sometimes uh -huh. near the Second World War, and then this just carried on and is still carrying on till now. Okay. And people have to suffer to e e have <laughs> a carrot juice every day. <laughs> So uh, it's, it's like, like there's nothing much into it. Okay, right. But certainly weather has got a lot of things to do with it, uh -huh. especially in Islamabad now. Mm. Uh, this uh, spring season Pollen is bringing allergy. in a lot of eye allergies. And we see every year there is a rise in the eye allergies, um, and it's getting worse and worse. Mm. And eye allergies are to be taken seriously. One cannot mm. just uh, ignore them. Mm. And one has to realize that there is a difference between the treatment of an infection and an allergy. Right, very important yeah. point there. Because normally point. people want a magic cure and for allergies there is no magic cure. Mm. Medicines can make life easy, mm. but whenever there is going to be exposure of the body to the thing that has caused an allergy, mm. allergy is going to strike back again. Okay. So we just got to be very much careful to mm. avoid those things which have caused an allergy. Mm. And if an allergy comes in, mm. we have to take medicines to get rid of the allergy. Uh -huh. Because the more it stays in, the more the memory cells will be produced, and the next time the allergic reaction is going to be more severe. Okay. So we divide the treatment into two different stages, mm -hmm. parts. One is a curative part, mm -hmm. and the other one is a supportive thing. Okay. The curative is like if I've got an infection, like a bacterial infection, I take antibiotics and I'm cured from the infection. But for allergy, it's just like diabetes. If I'm taking medicine, I'll be cured. If I leave them, I might get the things again. Mm. So diabetes is like the, the, the extreme part mm. of the supportive treatment. Mm. But for the allergy, we have to use it for the time when we have got the trouble. Mm -hmm. Usually people come to know about allergy with the symptoms of having red eyes, mm. watery eyes, and irritable eyes. Mm. So these are like things which uh, are uh, because of allergy. Okay. There's another thing that people talk about is the burning of eyes. Or yeah. tired eyes. That tired is not eyes, allergy, yeah. that is eye dryness. Eye dryness. Tell us about that, yeah. Dr. Allen. That is like when our tears are not being produced properly. Uh -huh. And allergy and eye dry eyes almost run in together. Oh, but, did, but doesn't it seem that the allergy is causing more of the... Watering? Yeah. Yeah. It's just like uh, uh, when we have got uh, dry skin patches mm. and we apply too much water on it, mm. they get, keep on getting more and more dry. Okay, right. So th that's basically a response from the eye mm -hmm. to make the eye wet. Mm. But they are not the actual tears because they keep on flowing out of the eye. Mm. They cannot stay inside the eye because they're not like of the proper cons consistency that's required by the eye. Okay, mm. right. So what is the treatment for dry eyes? Dry eye, we have to use artificial tears mm -hmm. and have to use it as frequently as required. Mm -hmm. But they're like some do's and don'ts with it. Mm. What I recommend is like avoid dry and even the places, uh -huh. not to have like uh, vents, like AC vents and uh, directly coming onto the face or standing That's in front really of a fan important. or like having the uh, window of the car on the, on the side open okay. because those, those are going to make things more worse for mm. the patients having dry eye. Mm. Okay, because we're talking about the weather related, um, you know, uh, problems and the effects on the eyes, tell us about sunglasses. Uh, you know, you get lots of sunglasses that are just available at roadsides and people are selling them. Should they have a proper a UV uh, um, sort of a, a, a shade? Actually, the purpose of a sunglass is having a UV filter in it. Mm. Because you, without a UV filter, sunglasses are just like more like fashion. Yes. And uh, there are like few things <coughs> that we can really uh, take advantage from the mm. sunshades. Like uh, it, if we can really protect our eyes from mm. a UV light mm. or like we can reduce the amount of UV going into the eye, mm. we can protect our retina, the mm. back part of the eye. Mm. And there are like uh, case studies in which we have seen like uh, development of cataract with an increased incidence of uh, UV exposure. Being exposed to yeah. the sunlight. So, you know, uh, Dr. Amr is saying that it's important that when you buy your sunglasses, make sure that they're not just fashion accessories, but they actually have a UV filter, a proper one that will be protecting your eyes as well. Okay, we spoke about laser. Uh, some of the do's and don'ts when people are recovering from laser surgery. Uh, sometimes, you know, they say that you should take more time uh, to rest your eyes and certain things you shouldn't be you shouldn't be cooking or you know just things you hear about what what are the myths and the facts here there are different type of lasers if you're 
talking about the laser surgery for removal of glasses, yeah. uh, there are three different types. One uh -huh. is called the PRK, okay. in which we peel off the surface of the cornea mm. and apply laser. Mm. That certainly has got a longer time of recovery and uh, the vision is not as perfect as the other two types. Okay. If we've uh, gone through a femtolasic or a smile, mm. the recovery time is normally 48 hours to 72 hours. Right. And after that, they can like uh, carry on with the normal routine. Mm. Uh, what we normally advise, like uh, after 24 hours, mm. they can do almost all the things except not to wet their eyes mm. or to rub them mm. for at least another day or two. Okay. And after that, they can slip into their normal routine work. Right. So talking about like, uh, we normally do not recommend uh, PRK treatment to most of our patients because of the limitations they're going to have and the quality of vision they're going to get. Mm -hmm. uh, we do recommend smile and femtosecond laser, that's uh, femtolasic, right. for a quick recovery and a better vision, uh, vision outcome. Okay. Yeah. And is age a, a problem here? or Just have to be 18 and after that, like, it's just a matter of choice when you want to have it done. Can, can elderly people have it done as well? Yeah. 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 Certainly. So okay. There's no bar for that. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Um, let's talk about uh, blood pressure, hypertension. How does that affect eyes and eyesight? A blood pressure is like more like a silent killer. It's never going to have a direct effect that we're going to see like uh, that we have a blood high blood pressure and we're going to end up with a trouble in eye. Mm. But the troubles can be really serious. Mm. One of the common indicators that we normally get with the blood pressure is that we get red spots in the eye in the front part of the white part of the eye, mm. which be, makes a bit of a scare for the patient and they end up in the eye clinic with red eye. Mm. But that is more like having epistaxis that is like uh, uh, blood coming out of the nose. Mm. And that's a warning sign that we should be controlling our, our blood pressure. Mm. Because if we do not, the vein can get damaged in the back part of the, of the retina or the arteries can get occluded. Mm. And once this happens, it is like an irreversible damage to the vision. Okay. It can be a com from like a segmental loss of vision to a complete absolute loss of vision. Mm. So it has to be monitored very, very carefully. Right. Okay. Uh, what? Uh, how do you see you know the future of eye surgery, um, not just globally but in Pakistan as well? In Pakistan, we are very proud that uh, ophthalmology. Um, is one of those segments of uh, medicine which is like at par with the uh, international ophthalmology societies. Fantastic. And whatever uh, they're like uh, visitors who come to our hospital see us working, mm. they get fascinated and they are really, really uh, almost taken back by the standard of medicine or the ophthalmology being practiced in Pakistan. Fantastic. And uh, there are like quite a lot of eye surgeons in Pakistan who are working abroad as well mm. and are considered to be among the top guys in the world. Uh, I myself are like um, I've been invited to multiple conferences and then and flying over to Switzerland on fifth uh, of April mm. to deliver lectures and for surgeries as well. Mm. So these are like things which are like moving very rapidly, and we're mm. very proud that uh, we're we're doing a very good job in Pakistan yes. and abroad as well. For the future of ophthalmology, mm. there, there are like lots of things coming in, mm. and uh, I think one of the most important thing is like. Glaucoma, uh, patients are really uh, absolutely tired of putting in drops every day. Mm. So there are inserts coming in that can be put into the eye and they would never need to put in a drop for a m three months time or a four months time, depending on how long the insert's gonna last. Right. There are like researchers working for like macular degenerations. Mm. There are like stem cell grafting being done for this thing. Mm. Uh, and uh, th like the sky is more like a limit. Uh, ophthalmology is like moving at a pace like one can hardly keep up with. Fantastic, yeah. and that's great that you know mm. uh, you're able to bring uh, forth such a positive uh, view for Pakistan mm. as well internationally. Mm. So that's great as well. We'll be back with more questions with our expert. Don't change the channel.
Okay, welcome back to the programme. We're having a you know fantastic time speaking to Dr. Amir about uh, eye diseases and eye problems. And um, you know, before we went for the break uh, in the beginning of the programme, in fact, we were speaking about cataracts. Now, tell us about uh, cataract and the treatment involving laser. Cataracts basically the cloudiness of the lens that we have in the eye. Mm. And it can come with age, with different diseases as we have already talked about. Mm. Normally people uh, visit the optician or an eye doctor with a complaint that they are not able to see things clearly. Mm. Okay. And the things are getting more like blurry. Mm. But can anybody look at it uh, and see externally as well? That uh, not without equipment. Okay. Uh, we right. have to look into it uh, uh -huh. with the help of different equipment to okay. find out that we have cataract mm. until unless it's gone like really wild, like uh, is absolutely at the end stage where it goes absolutely white, mm. and then one can actually easily identify right, right. as a white tiny dot right. in, uh, in, mm. in in the center of the pupil, mm. Mm. and that is why uh, when that thing happened, it was called as motea. Mothia. And there's, there's also Kala Mothia. What's, what's that? Yeah, that is glaucoma. They are, uh -huh. except for the name in Urdu, there mm -hmm. is no match. Okay, that's uh, a totally different totally thing. Totally different it? thing. A cataract causes damage that is reversible. Mm. Glaucoma causes a damage that is irreversible. Okay. Glaucoma is equivalent to having a high blood pressure in the eye. Mm -hmm. And cataract is cloudiness of the vision because of uh, opacity of the lens. And is the uh, glaucoma anything to do with the actual high blood pressure inside the body? There is a bit of a relationship, but mm -hmm. it's not an absolute relationship. Okay. One can have glaucoma mm. and high blood pressure, uh -huh. or glaucoma can be there uh, as an the independent identity altogether. Right. But inheritance certainly has got a lot of value. Mm. If uh, there is a glaucoma present in the family, mm. then it is like a, a, quite a bit of a chance, almost 30 to 40 percent chances that uh, in inheritance factor might come into play. Mm -hmm. So that is a reason that it is advisable mm. to have eye pressure checked, especially once a year after mm. the age of 40. To have eye pressure checked. Yes, exactly. so many people don't yeah. know about that, yeah. that you actually have an eye pressure and you need to get that checked. And how is that done? There are different ways of measuring it. It can be an air puff in which the air pressure is pushed uh, onto the eye mm -hmm. and we can get an approximate reading. Uh -huh. That is basically to scrutinize if you've got a very heavy outpatient, mm. like say in the government hospitals mm. where it's almost impossible to do the accurate readings. Mm. But to have a very accurate reading, it has to be done with a tonometer mm. that's a specific instrument that we use with uh, microscopes and slit lamps. Mm. Okay, and for the um, cataract uh, um, surgery you were telling us? Yeah, C uh, once there is a cataract, we have to see how much damage it is causing to the vision. Mm. Normally, as a criteria, I do not operate people until unless they have got a 20% effect on vision. Okay. Because the, our natural lens, even if it is diseased, is like the best form of the lens that is available to humans. Mm. It's only like when it is not working up to the 80% of its capacity, then it's time to have it changed okay. with an artificial lens. Right. The different ways of dealing with it, but mm. all the ways are through surgery. Uh -huh. There were like times when we were giving injections around the eye mm. and giving a large uh, incision, mm. a cut onto the cornea, taking the lens out and then mm. putting in stitches. But mm. those times have passed by. And this was about how many years ago? I, was something that, like people still are doing it mm -hmm. for different reasons okay. but it's not a common practice uh -huh. it's not been a common practice for almost like more than 20 years now okay right, so, right. it has been replaced by the ultrasound mm. and now is being replaced by laser mm -hmm. in both the cases we just put in a few drops to numb the eye and before that we have dilated the eye with the with the dilate, uh, with the dilating drops mm -hmm. once the eye is numb we can easily go in the eye take the lens out and put another lens in Mm -hmm. But there are two different ways. One, we can do it with an ultrasound. The other one, we can do it with a laser. Mm -hmm. Laser is more accurate and more precise and less traumatic mm. as compared to the ultrasound. Uh -huh. But uh, at the same time, laser is more expensive mm -hmm. as compared to ultrasound. Around about how much would be the cost Almost for double the price. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. uh, the reason uh, for being laser uh, is like uh, because it, the machines are expensive, the disposables used with lasers are more expensive. Mm. Uh, but having said that, I think it's every penny, penny worth being spent on it. Okay. Um, let's talk about you know uh, people needing transplants. Uh, what 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 is the whole process there? 
the, the transplants in the eye are basically for the cornea. Mm. And if there is a corneal damage mm. or like the scarring of the cornea, which cannot be treated otherwise with laser things, mm. then we have to get another cornea. Uh, from uh, like d d from uh, d from a cadaver's eye and can be transplanted, but that has to be through a corneal bank. We okay. cannot like just take out and put it in. Okay. There are like code of ethics involved in mm. all these things. Mm -hmm. uh, How does that work within Pakistan? It's it's difficult. Mm. Uh, government of Pakistan has got an authority by the name of FOTA. It's a human organ transplant authority that are like mm. doing uh, d working on it. Mm. Uh, basically, there is still a confusion between the kidney transplant, like uh, kidneys can, as we've heard, like can be like uh, traded, mm. but with the cornea, it's almost like impossible. Mm -hmm. because no one's willing to sell off their cornea yeah, and yeah. no one would do that. Mm. Uh, for the cornea, it has to be re retrieved after uh, the death of a person mm. and can be transplanted into someone else's eye. Mm -hmm. uh, they are, like in Faisalabad, they're doing it. Some cases have been reported in Lahore as well. Mm. They're doing a good job. Mm. Uh, it, 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 like, but still, like, we are in very, very early stage of managing with corneal banks and uh, having this thing mm -hmm. really go across into the mind of people that they should donate their corneas uh, after, uh, after after the death, death and, yes. uh, but it's it's like something I think it's it needs a lot of attention and uh, there's a l much more that can be done in this field right okay so so much to talk about unfortunately we come to the end of the program just quickly before we go a message for our viewers uh, sight is one of the most precious gift that we have and it is absolutely important to protect it. There are times when as parents we've got responsibility to protect sight of our children and uh, as we spend money and effort and everything for the education we have to spend some time and effort to protect their sight as well because if they've got good sight they are useful citizens they can do whatever they want in their life. And as adults, when we have got more knowledge about taking care of ourselves, mm -hmm. we should not be doing things which are bad for eyes, which we've already mentioned in the program. Right. Dr. Amrishra, thank you so much for being a guest today on our program. And your advice has been really, really priceless. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm really honored to be on the program. Thank, thank you, you. Likewise. OK, so we've come to the end of today's program. You know, look after your health. That's what we repeat in every episode. And it's wonderful to know from the feedback that we're getting from people that what we're saying is actually of use to, you know, our viewers. And they are adopting more of a healthy lifestyle after listening listening to the concerns and the issues and the things that are raised on the programme by our guests. So until next week, stay happy, stay healthy. Bye-bye.